So let's give it a few seconds. So for our application, we are using the mobile authentication from Firebase. While this is getting installed, let's jump to Firebase and see what we have here. I'm going to close the Cocoa Pods. Right, so in our Firebase, if you go to authentication part, here we can, uh, right now we have no options for the user to sign in with, uh, with Firebase. So if you call, click on sign in methods, here we have email, phone, Google, Facebook, Twitter, GitHub, or Anonymous. So we are going to use a phone number verification. So click on it, enable it. It will give you some instructions how to set it up. It's okay, we don't need it for now. So we have phone number verification enabled. And we, I'm going to enable email verification. This is for some users that uh, don't have a device. Actually, for phone number verification, you have to have an iOS device. Otherwise, it won't work. So if you are going to use the simulator, we are going to log in through email and password. Otherwise, we are going to use the phone number verification. So let's go to our uh, terminal. And as I see, it's still installing. This may take some time depending from your uh, internet connection speed. All right, so uh, let's go back to our Firebase. Just I'm uh, showing you around here. So we have our user uh, authentication methods chosen. Then here we'll show our users once we get some users registered. Then we have a database. Um, currently we have nothing in our database. The Under database, we are going to be interested in two parts, the rules which are security rules and allows uh, currently it allows to save something to database if authentication is not equals to null so if user is logged in through firebase he can uh, save and get some information from the database then also we are using the storage again uh, this storage part has its rules let me let's wait until it gets loaded Uh, take some time. All right, uh, let's jump to our uh, terminal. As you can see, it has finished installing our Firebase. So let me close this here. And also, as you can see, it advises us to use the app Xcode workspace uh, from now on. So let's close our terminal. Before, we used to open our application with this icon, app Xcode project. From now on, we are going to use the white icon to open our project. So let's open the project. I'm going to move my window here. Right, uh, before we had only the app part. Now we have also the pods section. And if you check under the pods, if you check under the pods, you can see all the pods were installed. So this is the part of Google Firebase pods. But this part we don't need. Another thing we are going to do is uh, now I'm going to close my uh, my project. We are going to use another backend for our project. Basically, when you are starting a project, it's uh, good to think about which backends you are going to use and for what. For this project, I choose to use the Firebase for user authentication, for storage, and uh, for, uh, for our push, but it's going to be only mobile registration push. Because uh, I previously used to use, try to use one provider for all the, for all the things I need in my application, but once, uh, if you remember the parse, uh, it was very nice uh, backend, but Facebook decided to close. So a lot of developers had issues to move their application to another providers. So if you are uh, using different uh, providers for different things, uh, if some of them try to decide to close down one day, you will need to only transfer a part of your application and not everything. So it kind of saves you some time. 
but it's just a good idea not to put all your eggs in one basket. So for this application I am using the Firebase also, I'm going to use the one signal for push notifications and I'm going to use backendless for saving our, uh, our properties. The reason I decide to use backendless for this one is two actually. The first one is really easy to when it comes to searching the directory. So uh, for my application, I'm going to provide uh, provide the user with options to search for the properties and not just look and look through the properties and try to find what the user needs. So when it comes to Firebase, it's, it's a really good uh, backend real-time database, but it's not really good for searching something. But uh, unlike Backendless, if we go there, website, Backendless is using uh, a system very close to uh, MySQL which makes it super easy to search for the for some item that you are you want to get back for our uh, for our application it will be easy uh, for two reasons first all the searches will be done on the user uh, not on the user side but on the server side and uh, the other thing uh, is more easily provided search. So I have an application here. You can see my properties table. This is actually the only part we are using Backendless for. So we are going to save our properties here. And everything else about the property will be saved on our Firebase. So let's say uh, pictures or something. So again, uh, the reason I'm using the Backendless is they actually have a free plan which uh, pretty much keeps 1000 items I think in uh, in table which is very good for the for teaching reasons because I don't want the uh, students to start spending money before even they start learning also the Firebase is very good for this they have a free plan unlike the other uh, backends which uh, they don't have a free plan or the free plan is so limited that you cannot do even a development testing Right, uh, so we are going to include also the backend list to our pod file because we want to use this as well. So let's go to our pod file, double click to open it. And I'm going to say pod and let's include our backend list. Click save, open the terminal cd to desktop cd to app pod install for those of you having problems with pod file or with uh, getting the application uh, ready don't worry I'm going to provide you with a starting application so it's going to include all the pod file with all the pods we need and all the setup inside the application so you can uh, you can download it just uh, just open the file, run your pod install command and you are going to be good to go with this, uh, with this starting application. So let's give it a few seconds for our pod file to, to download and install backendless as well. And then we're going to start building our application. Actually, I'm going to pause the video here and uh, resume once it's done.